right, that was an overdose. And uh, as a photojournalist, you have to always keep in mind that if, if you're doing a piece on the EMTs or the EMS or the paramedics or whatever, the patient, you need to, it needs to be confidential. So it, there's always ways of photographing things so that you're not re revealing the identity of the patient itself. And uh, looks like he's gonna be all right. Well, I am aboard the New Bedford EMS uh, SUV and I have Dave Xander here. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm pretty good. Good. Glad to see you staying healthy. Uh, we're trying, right? Yeah, we are trying. We're trying hard. So how many uh, how many ambulances you got in in this in, in the department? So it depends on our shift, but um, usually during the day we have five ambulances, a paramedic supervisor, and then what we have what we call an intercept paramedic, who's in an SUV similar to this, and he's a rapid response vehicle, so he can get to um, high priority emergency scenes uh, often quicker than uh, ambulances. So once in a while you're 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 asked to to respond as well. Or? Yeah, yeah. Once we all we all will get out there when it gets busy and we have to uh, answer calls. We'll all try to get out and do what we can. So today I'm gonna hang out with the with the EMTs in New Bedford and the paramedics and see how they're dealing with this uh, latest pandemic and. Oh, well, let's see how hard these guys have to work to keep themselves from getting infected. It's tough, but we, we try hard. We were, we were very proactive in the beginning. Uh, we knew this was something that was going to affect EMS um, greatly. So from the very beginning, we were very proactive with making sure we came up with policies and procedures uh, that would keep our ambulances extra clean. We always clean our ambulances after patient contact, uh, but we knew we had to a little extra this time around so i just arrived at, at the, their headquarters and just as i'm getting out of my car uh, i see some firefighters getting out and they were over there disinfecting the entire building which i thought was really interesting and that yeah. happens once a week right that happens very often the bedford fire department has been uh, very supportive and a great partner uh, for ems as we've tried to keep everybody uh, healthy our guys and our patients so yeah and i mean as a photojournalist i mean it's important to have these relationships i mean david and i yeah. have known each other for a very long time and I mean he, he, you know he understands that I'm here to just document what it is what you know what's happening on on a typical day and he's not expecting me to go take photos for instance of firefighters in front of their ambulance smiling but that that comes with a long relationship and that's the only way as a photojournalist that you really get behind you know behind the closed door so to speak so thanks David for letting me come along Anytime. and let's go see what we get maybe we'll put you to work today uh, maybe not. <laughs> in the belly? Yeah. I like to be up close and personal. And in this case, unless you're an EMT or a patient, you're not going to have access to the back of an ambulance. You still need to capture interesting photos, though. And in, I'm waiting for something to happen. I'm not an EMT, so I'm looking for patterns, anticipating. And that's when he inserted the IV into the patient. I'm always looking for other vantage points. I'm peeking into spaces. I'm taking in my surroundings and I'm looking for opportunities. I notice this hatch from the driver's side to where the patient is in the back. Why not? Take a peek, see what happens, see what the photo looks like. I'm always looking for special moments, but in a way that protects the identity of the patient. It's time to move along.
seems like uh, a police officer got here first, right, Bill? Right. So in a situation like this, I mean, it's an overdose. W what's the usual procedure? What happens? Uh, provide Narcan, provide oxygen. So right away, that's what you got to do, right? Correct. And it just seemed like at one point, he just all of a sudden popped into into being again, almost. Yeah, the Narcan kind of blocked out the opiate. He comes awake again. So yeah, I mean, if you notice a lot of the photos are shot from behind or specific details that you can't identify the subject. So uh, yeah, well, time to keep going. quite a bit of material and sometimes you just have to end it no matter how much more time I'd love to spend with these guys um, you know I mean as journalists we have the ability of, of bringing to light things that people forget about unless of course they need them and EMTs paramedics that's a good example, and they're dealing with sick people all day long. How do they keep themselves from becoming infected with a pandemic? Um, that's why I wanted to do this. And you try to do the best job that you can, but without the access, without those you know, links and, and uh, that trust that you grow in the community as a journalist, it's really hard to get behind, you know, behind the veil. So, time to move on.